Joe Biden is in Wilmington, Delaware today. He has not made a public appearance since his brief televised remarks yesterday, where he urged patience while votes are being counted. And those ballots are still being tallied this morning. While the latest numbers are encouraging for Biden, we do not yet know who will win either Georgia or Pennsylvania and likely the presidency. Following the Biden campaign now is our own Bo Erickson, who is joining us now from Wilmington. Um, so, Bo, first off, uh, is there, has there been any reaction at all from the Biden camp on the latest numbers that have been trickling in in Georgia? Well, good morning. After four days, um, I woke up and I saw that it was very nice to see at least some results in. So I've been uh, texting with some sources. And yes, there is uh, some uh, belated sense of relief here. And I've been talking, and there's both three different um, areas that they've been crediting, especially with Georgia. One source called uh, credited surgical precision of campaigning. Uh, when we were back in Georgia about a week and a half ago with Joe Biden, you looked out and saw this like huge parking lot full of cars. And I took a photo of it and it actually just looked like a C. And so there was some indication there that there was some um, attention and energy going on. And also they also credited the ballot program in Georgia, uh, which is the way that you fix your votes if you screwed up on the votes during the absentee voting. The second uh, area that they're crediting for this Georgia right now is Biden. He it took a lot of the brunt already throughout his campaign by making sure not to uh, dabble too much into these very liberal ideas. He was really strong specifically on law enforcement. As you know, he said that we need to give more money to police. Uh, instead of defunding the police. And the third person they're crediting with this lead right now for Joe Biden in Georgia is President Donald Trump. This is a rebuke of President Trump, they're saying. And when you look at the numbers uh, between 2020 and 2016 of who is voting for Joe Biden, I'm looking and it's actually an eight to nine point bump in white voters for Joe Biden over Hillary Clinton in 2016. He also had a larger share of young voters right now. He got 5% of Republican voters, and he also got 5% of first-time voters. So all together, we're seeing these numbers just go up a little bit more than President Donald Trump. And of course, we have to wait to hold on to see if this lead sticks. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's so tight right now that every single vote counts. But um, the information you gave us is really insightful about who's voting and the way they're voting. Um, the Washington Post is reporting that additional Secret Service personnel have been assigned to Joe Biden. Have you noticed additional security? And, and why is this happening? Well, it's interesting here because at the venue, which we are expecting if Joe Biden is declared the winner, that he will speak from uh, maybe sometime today, there actually seems to be a lower footprint of Secret Service protection than earlier in the week. But I was just talking to one source, and this source said that there are plans for a, a small footprint of additional security to be in place if and when he is declared the winner. So we're still um, asking questions about this. Um, I I think it can be assumed that, you know, if he wins, there will be some sort of added protection there. Uh, but it is unclear right now exactly what that looks like. So Joe Biden has spoken a couple of times in the last few days. He's been very measured, very calm. Um, he, you know, his presentation is certainly stands in, in, in contrast to the president, as we heard him yesterday afternoon, you know, talking about how rigged the system was and how the election is being stolen from him and so on and so forth. Um, it was interesting watching um, Biden's approach. But what do you think it's going to take for the former vice president to actually declare victory? Yes, it's a, it's a very measured response. I think that's a perfect word for this. I think back to the campaign trail when he was basically a supporting actor in the impeachment trial, and he was the last one to come out in favor of impeachment as well. He really holds his cards close to the chest here. Uh, but when I'm talking to sources, what they are waiting for is at least one media organization to declare Joe Biden the victor here. I'm told when that happens, this is all going to move really fast. This beautiful set behind us, we've been waiting for four days. I think it may get some use today if a decision is made. You know, um, you use the word measured. I'm curious about how you would assess Joe Biden's campaign strategy, if you can call it his a strategy post-election. Um, what do you make of the sort of image uh, the, vice, the former vice president is trying to project to the American people? 
This is a really calm message, and he is trying to um, instill confidence in the process. He is a huge process guy. Obviously, he really believes in what he's doing and believes in government specifically. And so he needs to kind of keep this through line going on because if he is anywhere nearing jumping ahead in the process, getting ahead of himself here, that could, uh, I guess, essentially um, kind of bring down the credibility at least a little bit of what he is trying to do if he wins. And that's restill a faith in government, according to Joe Biden. He's been talking about this since day one on the campaign trail since last April. We're starting to see uh, in a couple days ago, uh, this this light uh, creep up uh, talking about transition. Uh, there is that website and mm. it's notable what the website is called, called Build Back Better. That is his plan for uh, getting getting the virus under control and also uh, you know shooting energy into the economy as well. And Build Back Better is interesting, um, as noted by John Dickerson before, because that is a phrase that we usually talk about emergency response. Uh, it is in all of these brochures, if you search Build Back Better, um, from little local communities to the national government now, uh, there is a sense that, you know, this is what happened and together we're going to go forward and conquer this. That's very interesting. There have been some reports suggesting that he's been meeting with, you know, advisors on the economy, on industry. Um, what about Kamala Harris? We've seen her by his side uh, both times that we've seen him address the nation. She hasn't said anything. Where is she in all of this? Yeah, so we know that she is in Delaware with her family here. I think just hanging out like the rest of us. Obviously, she was briefed, as you just mentioned. It's actually been a little surprising to me that we have not heard from her specifically. She has done... Um, a good job standing by Joe Biden's side for the past couple days. Uh, but right now, she's just, kind of, she's just kind of seen as um, a side player and being by Joe Biden's side. Mm. Uh, we are expecting to hear from her if and when there is a decision, uh, a declared decision, and Joe Biden takes a stage in his campaign, starts moving forward with the process here.